Okay, um, we're now being joined by Mr. Gutswil Jumbo, who was former uh, Chief Press Secretary to the uh, Deputy Governor of River State, but he is a, a media consultant now, and uh, we're glad to have him join us to talk about issues concerning River State, especially as it concerns the budget that was passed and is now going to be repassed. Good morning and welcome uh, to the program, Mr. Jumbo. Yes, good morning. My pleasure being with you. Good morning, again. sir. Okay. So, uh, whenever we're talking rivers, it's like we're talking drama, you know, it's a series, you know, <laughs> <laughs> episode one, uh, mm -hmm. uh, scene one and all that. So, tell us, give us an update what the, what the general um, feeling is in rivers right now. Some people are saying the, the governor's wings are being clipped and this and that. The budget, which is a real co bone of contention right now, uh, that was passed, is now going to be repassed according to what the courts have said. So what does the general uh, feel like in Rivers right now? Okay, simply it's a bit of a confused situation for the generality of the people, except a few people who understand how these things work. For most Rivers people, they are like wondering what's actually happening, conflicting uh, courts, uh, decisions one is saying the status quo should be remained another uh, should be maintained sorry another one is saying that the budgets presented to the lawmakers and uh, as, as you know signed into law by the governor that it is uh, invalid and then another uh, earlier has declared the uh, right honorable AEDC as the speaker, the authentic speaker, and then they went on to pass the budget and uh, all of that, you know, is actually a state of anomaly. And uh, like you initially observed, it's an unfortunate situation that when you look at the algorithms for river states, you know, you just type in river states, uh, what you see you know, that rules out on Google search, Yahoo search, or anywhere you want to search is political drama, political crisis, sort of, you know, and if you look at it, it's actually an unfortunate situation. But for those who know how this is work, all of the decisions ruled out as at yesterday actually amount to nothing because they were all you know, given by courts of coordinate jurisdiction, the state high courts and the federal high courts are at the same level. You know, if the state high court sitting in Puerto Rico has said that the House of Assembly, as led by A.E.A. Edison before he resigned, is the authentic House of Assembly and him as the speaker, that is what the position of the law is. So anybody else, any other court of that same, you know, of coordinate jurisdiction with that same court coming up to say A or B or C. I mean, they are all, the, the, we know that the first court of coordinate jurisdiction that gives a decision, that is the one that stands. Others follow behind until an appellate court, you know, overturns, sets aside, reverses, endorses, affirms, upholds those, any of those decisions. It is only there that we can now pick that particular one that the appeal court has decided on. But for now, it is state high court, federal high court. So the one that is actually in the eye of the law, as we speak, given the provisions of the extant laws of this country, is the one that declared the AEM medicine in led uh, lawmakers as authentic as of assembly, you know, existing in the state. And then we also know that the up to the Supreme Court, the law has been made clear that once you exit the party that sponsors you to a political office, automatically you lose that position. It is law as it's as it is now. So the 27 and then later 25 lawmakers who become from the PDP to the APC, 
by law and not even members of the House of Assembly, let alone uh, being speaker or whatever. And then, uh, yesterday too, the governor has been restrained by one of the high courts from representing the budget that has been passed into law to this, uh, you know, other set of lawmakers. So that's, and, and that court said everything remains as it is until further notice, all the way to, yeah, I think, uh, February 24th or so, when the case will be called up. So it means that condition that the president gave the governor of River State to represent the budget to lawmakers who are, who are not currently members of the House of Assembly by law, you know, that has already been uh, taken care of. Well, all of this, you know, uh, FA, you know, will eventually be uh, find, as they say, what I will find is level as at Friday midnight. You know, that's the last day the Supreme Court has uh, to resolve all issues around the 2023 elections. So by Friday, we would know where we stand, you know, and whatever it is that has not been resolved, by Friday, we will know. Between now and Friday, we are sure the Supreme Court will, you know, take a stand on the river state in Bolivia. this budget, even though there were just so about five lawmakers, but we're seeing that over 27 had decamped and now 25. Do you think he should, you know, present the budget again? Does that even make sense? Isn't that against our constitution? Apart from the fact that the, the court has said he should not represent, but what is, what is he feeling like? What is the governor doing? Because there are some things that we said by law he shouldn't do, but he agreed to do them because he said that he needs peace to, to reign. So, will he implement that? Okay, well, we know that, uh, contrary to what he's been saying, he made those concessions under the US. You know, the trip was his former boss, his former his mentor, his political godfather, you know, set him up with the president. You know, so that it's not a battle between uh, Godfather and Godson. It is now a battle between the River State Governor and the President of Nigeria. Uh, any wise person would have made any concession just to get out of that situation. You know, but the, the issue is not in agreeing to the concessions. It is in the implementability of those concessions. The feasibility of implementing them. I think there the constitution allows a government to present a budget twice. I, you know, present the budget is being uh, affirmed by the House of Assembly. The governor has signed up on it. It becomes extant law. It becomes, you know, active. And then that same governor will now go before the House of Assembly again. Let's even assume that there were no crisis. That the same River State House of Assembly, the governor does a law allow that. The constitution does not recognize that kind of process. That would be a breach of the law, and the governor will not do that. Well, while uh, the, we, are, we are looking at all of that, uh, some people have gone to court and gotten an injunction from the court and say, no, you can't do that. Hold on, uh, let's look at the issues that have been brought before this court for now. Don't present the budget, nobody should disturb, and everybody just stay where you are. Uh, by February, we come back and then we look at the issues before us. Talking about the constitutionality of it, there is no constitutionality to it. The law does not allow that. It is clear that once a budget is presented before the House of Assembly, and the House of Assembly has looked at it and you know looked through the provisions of that budget and passed it, and the governor assents to it, it becomes law. For instance, the constitution is law. I want them to go back and call a, a, a constitutional conference again, and then we start working on the constitution again, while the constitution is acting, and we now come back and say this one is no more available. We can only amend the constitution. We, we, we cannot uh, from another constitution, can we amend what we have? 
except we will come up with another law that says this constitution is null and void. They will not go on. So in case of the budget, the, the law is clear that you cannot present it twice. So the government will have other viewers trying to please the president, trying not to you know show any form of disrespect to the president. They are okay, whatever, whatever. Uh, where is the pen? You know, he straight pen by the way, and then he signs, and then just gets out of that situation, and then comes back home, and then uh, you call me, you say, I'm in the process. I'll get okay, to okay, Mr. Jumbo, Mr. Jumbo, I, I want to understand yes. this because our time is uh, running. Um, okay. From the way you have uh, spoken, it means that the case against the people who decamped to another party is still in court. And if that is the case, and if the law is spelled out the way it should be, they are not uh, even members of the House of Assembly right now. Does it mean River State is operating without a functional House of Assembly? Because the speaker who was elected, the authentic speaker by law, recognized by law here, has resigned. Nobody uh, from the authentic people who are supposed to be in the House of Assembly stepped into those shoes, except the people who are, by law, illegally coming back to the uh, House of Assembly. So, River State is uh, operating without a legal um, House of Assembly right now. Is that what you're saying? No, not, not really. River State had a functional House of Assembly recognized by law. Five people. Justice Danagogo ruled that the authentic House of Assembly recognized by law is the remaining members of the House of Assembly who did not decamp. And A.E. Edison being elected amongst themselves as the speaker is the authentic speaker. Now, they also elected the House of Assembly guy uh, from uh, representing Ogobo in Koronu uh, constituency as his deputy. So, if A.E. Edison has resigned, his deputy naturally becomes the, the acting speaker or whatever. And so, so, are they holding uh, parallel? Are they holding parallel uh, sittings in River State? Let me, let me learn, please. Yes. The lawmakers representing Okubo, Nkoro, Boni, and uh, which other ones about, there are about five of them who did not decamp. So they constitute the House of Assembly based on the judgment of Justice Dana Gogo. So the River State has a functional House of Assembly. It, it, the only challenge is INEC not going ahead to conduct election to, you know, fill up the vacancies that have been created. That's the only issue we have here. So we cannot say that River State does not have a House of Assembly. River State has a functional, active House of Assembly. Yeah, what are they the sitting? Are they sitting? That's the question. Because we seem to hear news only from the Amaule section. Are they sitting? Uh, like they say, if a lie is repeated over and over again, it begins to sound like the, the truth. truth. So these people are also being strategic. Remember, they are politicians. Martin Sandomile has always been around. He was there throughout the Amici administration. He was there throughout the Wiki administration. He's been, he's been around for a long time. Okay. You know, and he's been in the House of Assembly for eight years. So, and then there are several other of them. Major Jack has been, he was there during the Amici administration. He was there during the Wiki administration. Enemy uh, George and several others. These are politicians. They know how things work. Okay. So they use media visibility to, you know, sustain uh, the, that consciousness in the minds of uh, okay. rivers people and Nigerians that they are okay. Okay. functioning. Okay, okay now, You can tell a lie as many times as possible. It does not make it the truth. Okay. Uh, I, I know, like we said, uh, you also confirmed that this drama coming from River State, and we know that this issue has not finished now. We, we are going to look at what happens in the coming days, and we'll still call you back to try to give us uh, information of what is happening in River State. We'd like to thank you in the meantime for being a part of our program. No problem. This I'll, be, I'll be on standby waiting for your call. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much.
Okay, take care. Yeah, that was uh, Gospel Jumbo, former River CPS to Deputy Governor. He was talking to us on the situation in River State. We'll take a short break, and when we return, uh, we'll be joined by our next guest to talk on the prominence of technology among Nigerian businesses today. Stay with us.